Welcome back, guys. You are joining us this week at the World UNESCO site, 8 Benedict. So if you're new around here, make sure you subscribe and let us know in the comments, where are you watching it from today? Maybe England, Wales, Scotland, maybe even Australia. Let us know. So now change his car. Creme brulee. Creme brulee. There we go. They're so pleased. Yellow, yeah, saffron, saffron, yeah. and the brown, tea with a lot of sugar, and the blue, edge with stone. Oh, okay, yeah. Yes. yeah. The color green, the color green, natural, and mixed yellow saffron. Mixed with saffron, saffron, yes. indigo, color tea. Color fixed. Yep. fixed for it. Yes. Look at that. All the same technique. It's very good. Loads of different ones. Yeah. Okay, so we just got that little postcard, which was cool. So he makes them all himself, and there was a bit of noise, so you might not have heard, but he actually uses uh, raw ingredients like saffron and tea with sugar, he said, um, and indigo. indigo to actually make the colors, which is really good. And then to get green, he mixes tea with saffron. We paid 50 dirhams for that little postcard, which you might think is expensive, but we did film the whole thing, so we were gonna chuck him a little bit for that anyway. Um, but they're all handmade right there. This is actually called Casar of Aint Benedict, and that is a collection of houses dating back to the 17th century. I actually thought it was older than that, to be fair. And it's a World UNESCO site for its building. It's traditional clay, hay, mud, water construction, which is just phenomenal. They call it an earthen city, and it is remarkable. And it's, you can, it's like walking back through time. You can see why it's a World UNESCO site. nearly at the top there's a loop walk here that takes you around the town because the town's actually not that, not that big it only takes uh, I think they recommend you spend about two hours here and that probably includes a cup of tea so we're on the loop walk which takes you all the way to the top of the hill a bit windy a bit dusty and even tastes dry do you know what I mean it's like that dry did you, just, did you say it tastes dry yeah do you know what I mean like that wind uh, hits you in the mouth and you're like Close your mouth. Close your mouth. Yeah. yeah there you go. Been told that before. <laughs> so we made our way up to the top of the village, but unfortunately we couldn't vlog much at the top because the wind was absolutely insane. But it was still worth it for these stunning views. To be honest, I don't think Rick was totally having us on there when he said he could taste taste the dry air there because my mouth is really dry now so we're just just trying to find a drink we were going to have a nice tea no, they do, they do, do, tea. They, do they do tea here tea and a coke is what I need, tea and a coke he's going to go for two drinks there's orange juice but that's probably a bit in it i don't like that well give it a tr give it a try hey mm. yeah <laughs> So yeah, I'll show you the view. You'll be able to see it behind me at the minute, but I'll show you the view properly in a minute, maybe once we've got our drinks and rehydrated. We are a little bit out of the wind in here. Yeah. That's cool, huh? I like it. And look at that view, guys. I'm here on the web. <laughs> okay, so we've ordered, they've actually had quite a long list of tea there, which we've never had before. You just get given. And it confuses us. <laughs> yeah, it confuses us. So I spoke to her and I said, look, what is sort of normal Berber tea? And she said, it's actually a mix. Like traditionally, it's a mix of two of them. So she's going to make that specially for us, which is good. And hopefully me and Kira get to have it ourselves. Yeah. You're not going to drink any of my tea, are you? Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, we're only, yeah. get, we're only getting two cups of the tea and these guys have got orange juice, so. This boy drank so much tea, didn't you? Yeah. You and your friend Abdullahi. He got you lots of tea, didn't he? He did. Yeah, you're cheeky for that. I want the green one. There we go. Like, oh, look at that, it's in a twizzly. There is a lady, one piece. You can add the more if you okay. want, if sugar, okay? Yeah, okay. Thank, thank you. you. Can I try some? I think I yeah. want the red one because the green, because red is my favorite color, isn't it? It does look the same. Yeah, it's back it's in. Oh, 
like spaghetti bolognese. Because <laughs> you can't say it. <laughs> no, it smells herby. It is herby. That's what I meant though, it has that like mixed herb smell. So everywhere we've actually been has had slightly different tea. The first tea we tried in Morocco was, we're pretty sure it was mint tea, but then, and we didn't like it because we don't really like mint tea. But then since, since that time, everywhere we've been since has said they don't drink mint tea in the winter and it's only good in the summer. So that could be perhaps why we didn't like it. Uh, last time we had the tea, it was, it was sort of a herbal tea. I think it was a green tea. That was at Casa Vuade. And he also said he put in bits um, from the acacia tree. Yeah, there's something on the acacia tree that yeah. he picks. So it was a herbal tea mixed with something from the acacia tree. And we all loved that tea. We had so much of it. So we've come here and we, we're not really sure what this one is. She said she'd done a little mix for us. Um, it's, it's herby. <laughs> I did joke and say it smelled like spaghetti bolognese. I'm not being disrespectful. It just smells very, very herby. Um, but you said it was rosemary, didn't you? It smells very similar to rosemary. Yeah, and, and so Rick has said I get first try. Haven't you? You're welcome. So we'll have a try. Nice. No, it's good. It's good. I think you're going nice. to like it. Yeah. It's nice. It's nice and sweet. I think it smells stronger than it is, so it's quite smooth and not, not difficult to drink at all. Quite nice, yeah. Let's give it a go, eh? Yeah, of course, darling. It certainly smells very strong. It tastes... It doesn't... It's not as strong as that, Jack. <laughs> very sweet. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't drink sugar in my tea so that for me is too sweet yeah he said he always says he's sweet enough oh, i am sweet enough <laughs> everyone in the comments come on i am sweet enough right <laughs> help me out help me out that's help. like the worst thing that people who don't take sugar say i'm sweet enough have some tea yeah uh, you can try some teddy yeah do you want to try some there's actually herby it's a little bit herby yeah do you like herby tea i think i do can i have all of it <laughs> yeah if you like it, you can drink it, yeah? I do like it. Nice job. <laughs> there we go. Vlogging with kids. <laughs> Vlogging with kids 101. Yep. Vlogging is difficult. You'll have a lot, a lot of YouTubers will say vlogging is so difficult. You have to put in so many hours. Try it with three kids. <laughs> you know, we thought this was a good idea. <laughs> People wonder why I look so old. Someone in the comments the other day was saying I look old. I'm only 23. It's quite busy. I'm not, I'm really not. Okay, so if you're watching this video and you think it might look a little bit familiar, it's because- I'm gonna to have to talk over myself here because again, the wind totally ruined our footage. But the delight I was trying to share was that 8 Benadou is a popular filming location. So if you recognise this view behind me, it might be because you've seen it on the likes of Game of Thrones, The Mummy, Lawrence of Arabia, or even Gladiator. Despite the challenge and filming difficulties for us today, we were ready to scale up even higher, this time for a better view of the ancient town. It is unbelievably windy up here, but we came for a view. Right, so you can stay here the night um, included in the 20 dirhams that you pay, which is dirt cheap. So if you are coming here, stay at this place because it's really cheap. But we're not doing that. We're going to head down a road to a place called Atlas View, um, which has a fantastic view of the Atlas Mountains. Who would have thought? Um, but there's a couple of facts that I just forgot to tell you up there. And that is the first is that Ain't Better Do is on the caravan route from ancient Sudan to Marrakesh. So this place has been used for, for stops for people to rest and uh, you know have a bite to eat over the centuries um, which Mazuga's on that route as well believe it or not across the Sahara imagine walking across there um, and we're now carrying on in our little caravan down to Marrakesh as well the second fact is that why is it called Ain't Benadou and that is because it was built by someone called Ben Hadou Ben in Arabic or Berber I can't remember is sons of so it would have been built by the sons of Hadou Ben Hadou 
there we go. So we're gonna hit the road. We'll see you tomorrow. After a brief night stopover at the lovely Camping Atlas view, which was also being battered by the winds, we moved on to Le Escale de Wazazé, where we got super lucky with the pitch right next to the swimming pool and the play park. And with three kids, this really was the perfect spot. Well, disaster has well and truly set in in the lorry. I've checked our gas this morning. We're running on empty. We are running on MD, so this could be a major, major problem because there is no LPG filling stations in the whole of Morocco. You can't get hold of it. So we've got a 70 litre tank, which is a big, big tank. It's about 58 litres of usable LPG. Um, now, what, what is strange is I filled up in Spain before we came across and the whole of the coastline so at sea level, and that's important for where I'm going with this, it didn't budge, it just said full. It is full to the brim, all the way down the coast. For the whole month we spent on that coast, it was full, didn't move. And then, as soon as we left from Agadir, inland, it went down from 80%, which is full on a, an LPG system, 80% down to 60%, just in that three-hour journey. So... The question I've got, and I have Googled it and I can't come up with an answer, is does LPG compress or decompress? Does the pressure of a you know, LPG change with, with altitude? I don't know the answer. I would have thought not. Um, but it was just strange how we came inland and it just started going down and down and down and down and down. So we're now at empty. So we're about 8% at the minute. And that's not good. We've still got four weeks in Morocco and we've not been using it to heat water we haven't been using the oven we've only been using the hob so to go through 58 liters on just the hob alone I don't know I just don't think that's right so we could have a problem here and Kira has been bugging me for ages go out and buy a gas bottle and a camping gas system which you can get out here to be fair um, we see other people using them but I'm, I'm, I'm like no no I don't want to spend the money I'm being tight and I'm hopeful we're going to last till Spain. So if on the last couple of vlogs you see us just eating like jam and banana sandwiches or something, not together, that's gross, but sandwiches, then that's the reason we would have run out of gas. So, but there we go. So for the rest of the day, it is chore day here. So Kira is going to be sorting out some of the uh, our cupboards and getting cleaned up. And I've got a job to do on the lorry. We have two bulbs out, so I need to go replace them. Okay, first bulb that needs changing is the indicator bulb. So I carry spares, as everyone should. Should be a relatively easy job. He says, as it doesn't open. There we go. Perfect. That's the old one. Perfect. See if it works. Awesome, the second one has a bit more of a problem to it. So this will be the fourth time I've changed this bulb because it's not sitting in the housing. And as such, it's just cracking when we go over these bumps and driving the roads. So I need a new headlight housing. So for all the truckers, where's well, the best place to buy another housing, Mercedes housing? I could have a Google, but let us know in the comments if you've got any uh, good websites for me to get something like that. So what I've tried to do, I'll show you. It'd be hard to see, but basically in there, we've tried good old duct tape to try and keep the bulb in its housing because it's cracked. But it's not working 
And so, yeah, there's a bulb. Easy to get out, but just broken. And there's an old bulb just there, you might be able to see, which is obviously just cracked. So not sure how that's cracked all the way in there. Anyone have any ideas how that would have cracked in there? Let me know. Okay, there we go. That's all sorted now. What is interesting is that this bulb that's blown has actually melted the plastic surround as it's loose in its housing. It's just edging up and sitting on the plastic, causing it to melt. So not, not good really, but that's in there now. Oh, show you guys. I've tried to position it as centre as possible, put loads of Gorilla duct tape around it. But that is me out of bulbs now. I don't have any more of these bulbs. Well, I think maybe I have one more. Maybe there's one in here. Let's have a look. Uh, don't think that's the same. No, so I'm out of those headlight bulbs now. We'll have to wait till Spain if it blows again. So that's the bulbs done, but I need your opinion on a few other things. When we get back to the UK, we've got some projects to do with a lorry. One of them, which some of you have been having to go at me for, is the wheels. We need to sort the wheels out. But what shall I do? Shall I clean them up and spray them? Just do it myself, bit of DIY, spray them with the uh, steel sort of silver look. Shall I paint them black? Shall I take them off? Shall I have them replaced with alloys? You know, is there any benefit to alloys? They are lighter there. I think they're about 40% lighter than the steels. So we'll save a bit of weight. But what should we do with them? Let me know what I should do with the wheels. Also, this area at the back here, I originally was thinking we stick a storage area for the kids' toys and things that we use often. So kids' toys, um, um, seats, you know, our chairs, camping chairs, that sort of thing. So I don't need to go in the garage all the time. But then I thought, spare wheel. We don't have a spare wheel and you're going to tell me off for that because we're in Morocco. There's no roadside recovery out here and I don't have a spare wheel. So um, do we use it for a spare wheel? So again, let me know what is going to be the better option because we do have European breakdown cover throughout Europe and the UK. So if we ever get any problems, punches, etc., I can call out recovery to get us sorted. But do we get it for the spare wheel, which means I need a jack uh, and, and all of that as well be able to lift it up to change it or do we go for an outside box let me know what you would do in the comments and there's one more thing and this is an inside job Kira is actually working on this at the minute yeah. this is our little storage bit here now those of you that have been around for a while will know that we had a dog we had our lovely boy Charlie um, who passed away a few days before this trip commenced um, that's his bed. That's his bed area, massive bed, but he's no longer here. So do we leave it as it is, just this junk storage area? Do I, I make it into cupboards? do not want it left as it is, because you can just see all our storage boxes and coats. And I quite like it like that. Mess, and then it becomes a wardrobe where we easily chuck clothes at the end of the day. But it's big, it's this big opening at the minute. You can get these big boxes in there. It's like got our rain jackets and stuff in there, which are essential, but, but we don't, we don't need, need them. To, but we don't need to see them all year no, round. No, we don't. Or... Do we get a new dog? <laughs> we would love to have We would love dog. a new dog. We really would. Yeah. They're, they're restrictive um, with travel. You can get around it, but, you know, a bit extra money. Um, but we loved having a dog. We absolutely loved having a dog. Um, so, yeah, again, let us know. What should I do with this? Should I put cupboard doors on? Should I leave my dog gate on? I quite like my dog yeah, gate. Yeah, so that's what we've got at the minute. Look at that. That works a treat in my opinion. So it's leave it alone, put cupboard doors on it, or get yourself a dog. <laughs> and let us know. It's the third answer. We want a dog. <laughs> so secretly if we do. If everyone says it, then I'll feel pressured and I might have to do it. Yeah, secretly we would love one, but maybe our lifestyle is a bit tricky. I don't know, I don't know. Honestly, we've got so much washing to do. That's one load, but I've got another load in the machine. I don't know how long it's going to take. 
because we all know that the washing machine time and real time are two completely separate things. So this took, this said it has 16 minutes left. No, I heard a timer, it said it took an hour. And I went in after the hour and it said it had 16 minutes left. So I'll just, I'll just go in soon and hopefully it'll be done. It's very warm today, but it is getting windy later. So it should dry really quickly. Good morning. So we're actually going to be moving on today, which I'm quite happy about. We spent longer here than we originally planned. It was a really nice place, don't get me wrong. Um, but we kept saying we were going to move on and then Rick kept changing his mind every day. But we're finally going today and we've got up really early. Clocks also went back because of Ramadan. So we're entering a whole new uh, period in Morocco, which we are very unfamiliar with. Um, so if you've been to Morocco or any other Muslim country during Ramadan and know what it's like, then do let us know because we have no idea as of yet because we've been stuck on this campsite. But we're up early and we are just about to turn the engine on, which Rick is feeling a little bit nervous about. Isn't ya? Yeah. <laughs> Ever since our incident in Spain, uh, was it Villa Ricos? Yeah, it was, On yeah. the East Coast. Yeah where our batteries went completely flat, I've had this nervous bit of our batteries going flat. And we've sat six days, I can monitor the, the engine battery levels, they're sitting at 24.3, which is about 60%. So, but it's cold as well, we're 1200 yeah. meters up. So it's cold, yeah, only so yeah, I do get nervous every time. And plus, I get this little bit of anxiety where there's other people hanging around. Yeah and they see you jumping in and they all turn and look at you and then you're like, please turn over, please turn over, please turn over. <laughs> and for some yeah. reason, even though it is what, eight o'clock? Well, not even eight o'clock yet. It's quarter two. Everyone's up at this campsite and they're already outside. So there could well be an audience in a minute, <laughs> which will be so. fun. <laughs> all right, shall we find out? The idea is you sneak in without anyone watching. <laughs> I think they'll hear. Well, I did that, I didn't do that last time. Oh, Easy. like, like a dream that was. Tori saw my anxiousness and it was like, Dad, <laughs> Dad. <laughs> don't feel anxious. I'm a beast. I didn't realise you had four kids. <laughs> huh? Four kids? No thanks. <laughs> freezing up. Isn't it freezing up? All right, so the excitement is now about to start because we are literally at the base of the Atlas Mountains, which means we are now going to start our big climb, our big ascent to, I don't know if it's the top or not. I don't know if we'll be going as high as these, I don't really know, but I'm excited. It's good. A little bit of nervousness as well, but I do like it. Here we go. The climb begins. So literally just a few years ago we'd have been on the old road so it'd have been like twice as long probably. Can you see the old road? You can see parts of it and so like some of it will follow the old road and yeah. then they've obviously cut corners out so holy <laughs> that's incredible <laughs> look at that it looks like a painting. It does doesn't it like a silhouette. Holy moly are we going down? I don't think we'd gone that, that far up yet. I'll be taking that. Right, I'm just going to show you. We had an opportunity to stop. Also allowed me to let a tanker past. Whoa, right next to the edge. Look at that. You can see the road down there. Really, really twisty. How incredible. And I love these landscapes. And what's even amazing is the forests. We've seen trees, we love trees, we love that green. This is good. Bit of a smell from a brakes, to be expected. Okay, let's hit the road again, I think. Let's go. Feeling in my bones, I 
So we just spotted our first bit of snow up on the mountain. Luckily it is up up on the mountain. I don't think we're gonna be I do not want to snow on the road. No, there's no chance. We're not gonna be touching any snow, but you can see it right at the top. Sort of like the same as Norway when you drive along the fjords, obviously at sea level, and then you do a mountain climb. Uh, like we did loads of times and then the kids were like playing in the snow at the top in their shorts because it's like 25 degrees yeah, it was so at fjord warm. level and but it was still warm at the top still, yeah it still was it just because they get so much snow quick pig stop pig stop pit stop for a wee break everyone will, with kids will know how it is huh you have two pairs of pants on you do know in the morning, Jack, you need to take your old pants off and then put your new pants on. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Jackie. Oh, quite you want to sort yourself out then, mister? Yeah, go take them off, sort them out. Bye. What a boy. Keep the what a boy. <laughs> Lovely view of the mountains behind us. And what is absolutely beautiful, I said it up there, but I'll say it again, is... The greenery. Look at this. So you can hear that water in the river down there. So it must be something to do with the climate. Maybe they get all the rain. Well, I think they do get all of the rain North Morocco, I know when we came in off the ferry in Tanjimed, it was a very, very green place. Took us by surprise. And then south of the Atlas Mountains, very arid, rainfall, very unpredictable. But it is good to see that greenery again. Get you down, please. Get me down. Come here, you. Did you have a wee? Yeah. Yeah. Get Jack down. How many pants you got? Put your dirty pants in the washing basket. Unbelievable. Done. Done. Come here, Terra Tots. Enjoying it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you want to climb? Yeah. You, you want to climb some big mountains? Yeah. Okay, go on then. Yeah. We'll pick you up in two years. Okay. Okay, he says. You'll figure it out. You'll go back to Abdu Ali's, yeah? Right, so I suppose we better tell you guys where we're actually heading because I don't think we've done that yet. We forgot that bit of information. <laughs> yeah, so we are heading to Marrakesh, which we're really looking forward to. We are expecting the roads to change quite a bit. So obviously we've been on these mountain roads, it's been fairly quiet in terms of traffic. And we've heard that Marrakesh, as you probably would imagine, is going to be quite busy. It's going to be mayhem. Yeah. So that will probably be, I imagine, the busiest roads that we'll come across in Morocco. So it could be fun. Oh, selling more gems. Yeah. Looks very beautiful, my friend, but not today. You barely sore, buddy. Teddy's feeling a bit poorly. So we've been climbing up for a bit. We came down off the big mountains and then we started climbing up again for some reason, so... Are we still climbing? We're going down now? We're going to be going down, but we are now definitely the other side of the Atlas Mountains. Yeah. Mr. Ted, is it that sore? <laughs> and wow, that is literally... Yeah, this side you can... I'm going to have to turn it off. Yeah. Well, that escalated quite quickly. His belly was sore and his throat was sore and we had nothing for him to be sick in. So we passed him Jack's welly and he was sick in his welly boot. So that might be the end of Jack's welly wearing in Africa. <laughs> but poor Ted, we've got him a sick bowl now and we're just going to take five, ten minutes, whatever we need. See if he can feel a bit better before we carry on. All right, so we've arrived in Marrakesh and the first things first is to go and find a bite to eat. Now 
on our way to our campsite we did stop off we got our food shopping also ended up at McDonald's which was always nice actually um, it was probably the best McDonald's burger we've ever had weren't it it was delicious it was like we're in Morocco eating McDonald's but it was really juicy really good burger got all our shopping done it was manic 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 so we're now on our way to the campsite camping Lorelles I think it's spelled Lorele, Sad Lorele, maybe, I don't know. But it, we're on a proper dirt track road right now. It does not feel like we're on an approach to a campsite. It started off like a, a really modern development. It did. With nice, beautiful, like probably less than five year old roads, smooth as anything, and then, I don't know, turn into the Bronx. Turned into this. Going into the hood. <laughs> Hello, Sarah Oh, we've got overhanging trees. We've got two vehicles in front of us at reception. I mean, it looks nice. I can see the swimming pool. I can see that swimming pool. That does look good. There doesn't really seem to be many spaces that are, are big. So there's, got... a, there's a lot of big spaces where there's just standard size motorhomes in. Right, And yeah. so <laughs> it's like all the big spaces have been taken up by sort of average people wanting... How dare they? ...a big <laughs> space. So, which is like, well, fair enough. Um, but... Yeah, so like here, that end one, and then like these three here, are the, the, or one, two, three yeah. are supposed to be long. Yeah. But, you know. Here we go, so plan B. Rick has spotted a spot near reception. It's not really a parking spot, so he's gonna see if they'll let him or not. I'll get out of the way. So, that's the plan. He's gonna park there and go in and say, is this okay, because there's nowhere else for us to go. Big one. No, don't run. Oh, this is not going well. So we spoke to the lady at reception and she told us to come to like one of the corners which is reserved for a group, but she said, we'll be fine here because there's not that many of them. So me and Rick walked down here with the kids and, and I, he went back to get the lorry. So I stood there and then another, like the massive one we saw at reception pulls up and was like, I'm parking here. And I kind of like, you know, usually if it was just a case of like me or them, you know, fighting for a spot, I'd really uh, go for it. But because I know this is a, a group, I can't really stand there and go, oh no, we're parking here. So yeah, but it does, it does annoy me. Like, this is not like how you want to feel when you're just turning up at camps like this much hassle. Very frustrating. And also like, why do you need that big a motorhome when there's only two of you? I know I'm grumbling now, but honestly, it's bigger than ours and there's five of us. It has been a difficult few days here and so we're going to the airport. We've packed our stuff, we're heading away.